Hello everyone, in today's video we will be looking at how to visualize grasshopper models in AR or augmented reality, which is a technology that enables users to visualize and position 3D objects through the lenses of their mobile devices. Its purpose is to provide a much better understanding of a real product and how it interacts with a specific space before it gets manufactured. It is quickly becoming adopted by many industries as the required hardware and software is already included in most modern smartphones and tablets by Apple and Google, for example. And in today's video, I'll show you how easy it is to visualize grasshopper models in AR with the help of Shape Diver. Plus, you will learn how to add this to your current website. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Grasshopper and Rhino and we're gonna start by creating a very simple model. We're just gonna create a box. So we go to primitives and then here we have domain box. We can add it here Then we go and uh, to the params section and into inputs we have the slider number slider and we're going to use this as a parameter for our box so this is going to be the x um, axis the x dimension so we put also the name here so we can recognize the parameter then we go the y change the name as well and finally the set And this will be enough to already display this in AR. However, let's add a little bit more. So let's go again into the surface section and then we go again to primitives and let's go to sphere. And we're gonna create a sphere and another uh, slider as well, which will control the radius of this sphere then we just need to change here the name as well for r for the radius and now let's use one of the maybe one of the tools that are more powerful of grasshopper that are all the boolean operations that save you a lot of time because with those you can automatically calculate um, the results of very complex shapes interaction of interactions of very complex shapes so in this case we can put here the box and here the sphere and then we get this result now we have the three the, the three parts are in display in preview on so if right click if i right click here it's preview on so i need to preview off everything that i don't want to see also when i go into ar into augmented reality so if i just want to see the final result then i have uh, then i have to preview off these two and then we just leave the final result here and that's it. So now how do we display this very simple Boolean um, difference in AR? So I'm going to save this. I already have it saved as a test file. Then here I have it prepared in a folder. Here is the folder, test. It's just a GH file. And then here we are in shapediver.com slash app. And then we are in the login section. If you don't have a Shapediver account, you can easily register here. It just asks you a couple of questions, your email, your password, and that's it. Or you can also log in with Google, Apple, and even your McNeil account. After you are done with that, all of that is for free. You can do it very quickly and you don't have to give uh, any payment information or anything. Everything is free. Then you will be able to log in. So here I'm already able to log in into the Shape Diver account. And then here we will get this upload option. So we can just click in upload. And now I'm gonna drop the file that I just created. So it's just as, sim as simple as drag and drop. Just drop this here. Then our servers will process it. So we just let it um, process. And then it will let us know when it's ready. 
normally we are checking that you don't have any plugins that are not supported or custom C, uh, C sharp Python scripts. But this one is good to go, so we can open it and use it straight away. Now, today we focus on the AR section, and that's here. So here we have plenty of options, which, which we have covered in other videos, but today we want to focus in AR. Okay, and then here we already have the visualization, so it's exactly the same that we had in um, exactly the same thing that we had in Rhino, but of course the rendering is a bit different because one thing is the rendering that Rhino has, and another thing is the rendering that WebGL, that's the technology that allows 3D models online, has. So, but here we have the same uh, geometry and the same options, X, Y, Z, and radius. So if I change here the radius, then we can see the result very quickly. Now, in the AR section here, we have enable AR. So if you want to enable AR, yes or no and the scale of this object. So how big is it? So in this case, if we put it in meters, it's telling me that it's 0 0.25 meters, which would be 25 centimeters, um, which I think is a good size. Um, but if you think this object should be bigger, then you have to change here to other dimensions. So millimeters will be too small, it goes even to zero. Centimeters is also too small. So this object in general is very small. So it seems that the right option is meters. But here, for example, you can see that in feet we can get some results. Or even if you have, if your model was not built with a specific scale, then you can go custom. Um, that is basically, in this case, this model is very abstract. So it's pretty much a custom option. Um, and then here I can decide my scales. So if I go same time, then it's 2.5 meters, which is huge. But I can put here any number that I want. So that was uh, 25 centimeters, as we already said. I can go double, that will be 50 centimeters. So I'm going to stay with my um, one option here, which is basically meters. And that's it. But now, how do we see this in AR? So for that, we need to go to a device that allows that. So either a, a phone with a, with the latest technologies for AR, um, the majority of smartphones nowadays contain that, or um, um, or a tablet. Also, you can do it that, there. Um, to be able to test, then we will make this uh, object uh, public. So in that way, anybody will be able to access it. So now I have here my phone prepared, and then we will be able to see it in AR, and then I will save it, and then I will look for it when I go in ShapeDiver in my phone. Okay, so we are here in shapediver.com slash app in our smartphone. And now um, I'm not even logged in, I'm not registered, but I can see this option of browse more models. And this option um, allows me to see any model that has been uploaded in ShapeDiver and is uh, public. And of course, the last one that we see here is the one that we just uploaded. So if I click on it, I can have a look at it. I will go full screen so that we can just focus on the 3D model and on the parameters in the bottom. And the main thing is the new option that we get in the top. So now if we get in the top, this AR option. So if we click on AR, that will automatically open whatever app um, your phone has if it is Android or if it is um, iPhone and that um, opens the um, camera we have to mo move our camera slowly so that it tries to find um, a surface where to put our object and here it is our object so now I have it here on my desk this object and this is something that we just created here with grasshopper and now we have it here on the desk so we can have a look at it all over the place the AR tries to look for the source of light that we have and tries to replicate um, as accurate as possible how the object will look in the 
lighting of the room where we are sitting. We can make this object also smaller. If we pinch, we can make it smaller. We can also rotate it. But of course, this is a very abstract object, no? So what if we look for other object? Um, this one was our quick example. But we can go uh, back. And then in the main page, in the welcome page, we have here some uh, featured models. And then, for example, here we have this MacBook cover. We'll go also full screen. And the same thing, in the top, we get this AR uh, button. So I'm going to click on it. And then it will open in AR. So again, I just have to move a little bit around so that it looks for where our surface is. I can move the map move around, rotate it so I can focus on the back. Where is, where is the parametric part? Okay, so again, it's here in my desk. And um, I can go back into, into the model in, in Shift Diver. And then I can start changing things in the parameters area. No, so here we go into patterns. And then in patterns, we can, for example, change to pattern one. And let's say that we want a different color. So we change the color. And let's say that we want a different density. So we change the density. Well, oh, that's too dense, I think. So let's make it a bit less dense. Even less, let's see how it looks. Okay, and what about pattern 5? So we can explore different options, text for example here, and then here I can put for example Edwin next. So it, you can see now Edwin in the in the cover. Text size I can also increase to big. You can move it around. And then when you are ready and you want to see the game in AR, then you just click AR. And then we just move around to look for the space where we want to put the object. And here we have it, so we can again rotate it, move it a bit back. And then I can see it here on my desk how it would be the final result. Now let's have a look at other objects. So let's have a look at something bigger. So I have here something prepared. So for example, what about this table? So we are going to open um, in a big screen as well. So we focus on the object. And then I want to check it in AR, but now we will go not in the desk, but on the floor. And we will be able to see this model. Again, it's a grasshopper model. We will be able to see it on our room. And there you have it. There is our desk, our table. So now we can check it from below. We can check it around. Not all complete in AR. We can check how big is it in comparison to the rest of the things. We can make it bigger if we want. Okay. We can rotate it and put it wherever we want it. But of course, I can go back into Grasshopper. Sorry, back into Shape Diver, and in Shape Diver, I can explore the model again and change um, its parameters. So, for example, let's say that I want to change the table dimension because maybe I want a square table instead of a rectangular table. 
so I change this to 500 and maybe I want the table height yeah so that's why it was looking small because it was a table height of 500 but if we go to 900 for example let's go to 900 and let's go square but that's too too um, different so let's go for 1000 and then 1000 of width and then if we go to table legs we should be able to make the the table um, legs a bit wider legs thickness so we can make the legs thickness 100 that looks better and if we go again to AR, so as you saw, we change a lot of parameters. Let's see how it looks. So we move around, it finds the floor. And then it should load our table. There you go. So there you have our table exactly as we um, planned it. So squarish with the legs thickness, everything else. So it's a parametric AR, augmented reality app, all made with Grasshopper. So let's have a look now at the last example. This last example was created with a custom uh, user interface. What, have, what we have seen so far is always using the user interface that ShapeDiver offers uh, out of the box. But, of course, you can also create your own user interface, put it around our viewer, and our API will give you all the tools that you need to be able to interact with this model, plus, of course, also AR. So, in this case, you can see the model, um, the, yeah, the user interface look different. Um, we have this kind of uh, menu that expands our contracts. We have here different um, products that they offer and sizes. So let's go for a big size and then let's go for a different color, for example, a green color. Okay, and now we can click also on AR and it's the same that would happen in Shape Diver where it will open our camera and then we are able to see the model in our room so we can rotate it a bit so we see it from the side and here we have our chair and our room so I can compare it with other objects around and there you have it so even in your own website, you can have AR out of the box. So let's go back into our computer. And now we will explain how did we manage to bring a ShapeDiver model with augmented reality outside of ShapeDiver. So the last example that I showed was completely outside of ShapeDiver. In the background is using ShapeDiver, but in the, um, in the front end, what the final user sees is just the branding of the particular um, user that has this model. So in this case, we just need to go to exit first. This will take us to the public um, page, not the edit mode, but the public um, mode of our model. And down here we have iframe. This iframe is a piece of code, HTML code, that you can paste in your, in your um, website. Um, and that's it. So here you can see you can change different colors that will be sh will be used in the iframe. And um, if you want to change the size of this iframe, and then here we have the copy iframe code. Then if we go into an HTML uh, empty page, I can paste this here. You will go there to your website, and then you can 
just paste that in directly in your website and that will bring everything that you need automatically all what was before in shapediver now we'll be able to see it here outside of shapediver um, when we open this also with our fonts and then we will be able to also see this additional option that we saw in the font that was the AR. The second way of doing it is not with iframe. The second way of doing it requires a bit more of covering. So probably you require, if you don't have uh, um, web development knowledge, then you should find a partner that can help you with it. But we have a complete documentation of how to use our what we call our direct embedding, which is more if you want to create all of these very um, uh, custom user interface, custom interactions, and in this case, um, this custom AR functionality so that you can access AR through your website. And for that, um, you just need a couple of um, functions. So here, all of this is uh, very um, general for any model that you want to load uh, outside of Shapediver. And the only thing that you need to know for AR is this one. This one basically just tell us, viewer that viewable in AR, tell us if the device you are in actually supports AR. So for example, the computer doesn't support AR. So viewer that viewable in AR will be always false when somebody is in a computer. So we know that we don't give them the option to see, in, to see it in AR. And then finally, if it is possible, then you use viewport that view in AR. That's it. Just two functions that you need. And with that, you are good to go to be able to see this model in AR. We hope you can see the potential of visualizing grasshopper models, parametric models using AR. There are plenty of use cases and things are barely getting started in many industries. So the potential is huge. If you want to know more about what other grasshopper developers are doing with Shapediver, make sure to visit our website, shapediver.com. And I will see you in the next one.